Good evening, everyone. Um, today, we are going to continue our talk about David's story. Um, if you have gone on my website, I shared the link. You are able to see the... Um, you'll be able to see the case study that I went ahead and typed up. Um, it's those same questions that I've asked previously that you kind of keep in mind as we go through um, David's story and as we learn um, different topics. Uh, so those six questions, just as a reminder, is who are the main contributors to the story? So the story that we read, what is God trying to teach us? When is the story taking place? Where is the story taking place? Why is God allowing this to happen and how is it applicable to my life? So anytime you're reading the Bible, you really should keep those six questions, uh, those six topics in mind. It will just help to get like the fullness of the story. All right. So also on the case study, I went ahead and kind of gave like a nickname for each chapter that we're reading. So like, um... I said previously we're doing about five chapters a day just so that we're able to get through his story because it's so long and there's so much information in there. But 1 Samuel 21, I kind of named it David's on the run. So if you remember right after we ended Bible study last week, we stopped at David running from Saul because he's trying to kill him. Um, so a lot of people might not be able to... Uh, like feel connected to that but you can feel connected to people hating on you like Saul is a straight up hater um and so because of his hatred towards David he has to go on the run um chapter 22 it's I named it Saul's slaughter so you're going to learn about that and um the biblical principles behind that that's uh that's serious he slaughters um priests the Lord's priests so um crazy man the first samuel 23 saul's search so as david is on the run saul is trying to find him um and you're gonna learn more about that tonight um first samuel 24 i've named it humble yourself uh david humbles himself um before saul and you're gonna see how sometimes um maybe you're under leadership that is very harsh and so if you just Take a second and humble yourself. You can actually be blessed. Um, and then the last chapter, 25, David finds Abigail. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to start with uh, 21. And basically in this chapter, David is on the run. And he gets to a priest named Emelech who is there got some bread and so David goes up and basically asks him for food because if you remember he's on the run so I'm gonna start with verse two it says David answered Imelech the priest the king sent me on a mission and said to me no one is to know anything about the mission I am sending you on as my men I have told you to told them to meet me at a certain place now then what do you have on hand Give me five loaves of bread or whatever you can find. But the priest answered David, I don't have any ordinary bread on hand. However, there is some consecrated bread here, provided that the men have kept themselves from women. David replied, indeed, women have been kept from us as usual whenever I sent, sent, uh, set out. The men's body are holy, even on missions that are not holy. How much more so today? So the priest gave him the consecrated bread, and since there was no bread there except the bread of the, uh, so there's no other type of bread there. Um, and so now we're going to jump down, and basically David asks Elimelech on verse eight, "Do you a uh, sword here i haven't brought my sword or any other weapon because the king's mission was urgent the priest replied the sword of goliath the philistine whom you killed in the valley of elah is here it is wrapped and clothed behind the um you feel ephod ephod the little covering that you put over before you talk to god um and if you want it take it there is no sword here but that one so david there's none said there's none like it give it to me so 
if you're listening to this, you can tell, like, David is like, yeah, I'm on this mission, but I don't have any weapons. Can I, can you give me a sword so I can cut the bread so I can eat it? So I know that the priest knows something is up, but because he is David, um, he's allowing him to sit here and basically lie to him um, so that he can eat. So basically, as the story continues, he's continuing to be on the run. So, what? Uh, who are the main contributors to this story? I mean, clearly it's David. This is really centered around David. Um, I would say the priest as well, but um, really David is the main contributor here. So we're, we're seeing him on the run, um, and he is scared for his life. So if you continue down verse 20, 21, or the chapter 21, uh, there is, D David goes to Gath, and there's a king there who is like, it's not David. So David knows if the king knows it's him, he's going to get killed. So he starts acting insane. And I'm actually going to, I'm going to actually read this because um, I think this is hilarious. So it says, so he, on oh, verse 13, so he pretended to be insane in their presence. And while he was in their hands, he acted like a madman, making marks on the doors, on the gates, and letting saliva run down his beard. So the king says to his servants, look at him. He's insane. Why bring him to me? Am I so short of madmen that you have to bring this fellow here to carry on like this in front of me? Must this man come into my house? So David is strategic. He knew like, hey, if this guy knows who I am, he has me captured, he could kill me. Um, so what is God trying to teach us here? He's trying to teach you that your reputation will precede you. So you need to be aware of what, like how you act around people, what people say about you, because you never know who your enemies are. And when you do know who your en enemies are, you're able to be strategic um, and get yourself out of a situation. Where is this taking a uh, place in? So he was at first at Nob, and then he ended up in Gath. So there's two different places. When this is happening, he's on the run. That's when it's happening. Um, why is uh, God allowing this to happen? Well, Saul has free will. So if Saul wants to go and kill David, he has the power and the authority to do so. Um, and so we have to realize that, that even when there's bad happening, it's because we have the free will to do so. Um, but he also has made this decision to kill David. So because he has free will, because he's made the decision to kill David, that is why David is on the run. That's why this is happening. Um, and so everything's not always on the Lord. Sometimes we have to uh, take accountability for the things that are happening. Um, so how is this applicable to your life? Um, you know, many of us may have never experienced like I have to go on the run, like somebody's after me and wants to kill me. But we have experienced people not liking you and making your life harder. Because Saul does not like David, his life has been made harder right now. It was supposed to be uh, a good time. He, he he slayed Goliath. He's the one that helps to soothe the king when the king is dealing with tormenting spirits. His best friend is the prince. But yet his life has been made harder because someone doesn't like him. Um, and so that can be anywhere. That can be at work. That can be at school. If you're still in school, that can be, um, you know, in organizations. If you're a part of organizations, when people don't like you, things are a lot harder. And dare I say this, and don't think I'm a Trump supporter for saying this, because that is not the case. I'm saying that because people don't like Trump, we've made his presidency a lot harder. Every day, there's something mean being said about him on, you know, TV, on social media. Um, and so that could be, we've made his life harder, right? So um, just throwing that out there. Just be aware of, you know, your reputation. Clearly, Trump wasn't aware of his reputation. He thinks everybody loves him. And technically, people did love him until he became, tried to become president because Hollywood loves him and now they don't like him. Um, but I really think it's important to just pay attention to your reputation and ask God for guidance on who your enemies are because you never know who they are. All right, so now we're going to jump to 22. And so like, like I said earlier, this is Saul's slaughter. So basically, this guy 
comes up to Saul and is like, yeah, we saw David. Um, we heard that he was in, you know, he was in Nob with um, the priest and you should be aware of this. Like you're after him. You should be aware of this. So basically um, he tells him this. And so this is what happens. Then the king sent for the priest Amalek, son of Atub, Atub, and all the men of his family. So he didn't just send for the priest. He brought the whole entire family with him, right? And so um, Saul says, listen now, son of Etub. Yes, my lord, he answered. Saul says to him, why have you, why have you conspired against me? You and your and your sons of uh, you and the son of Jesse, giving him bread and a sword and inquiring of God for him, so that he may rebel against me and lies and wait for me as he does today. Answered the king. Hold on, I lost my place because somebody was calling me. Answered the king. Who of your servants is a, as loyal as David, the king's son-in-law, captain of your bodyguard, and highly respected in your house? So he was like, okay, first off, Saul, who else is more loyal than David? He is not only your son-in-law, he is your captain, and he's highly respected in your house. He's like, was uh was that was that day the first time in I inquired? Of God for him like is this the first time I've ever inquired of God with him of course not let not the king accuse your servant of any of any of his father's family for yet the servant knows nothing at all about this whole affair so he's he so Saul comes and says hey I need you and your whole family to come here why are y'all conspiring against me why are y'all up um you know buddy buddy with David and then he's like sir First off, I just did my job, okay? He's a highly respected man in your household. He's all these things to you, and you're coming at me sideways, basically. So then, um, so then the, then the king ordered the guards at his side, turn and kill the priests of the Lord, because they too have sided with David. They knew he was fleeing, yet they did not tell me. But the king's officials were unwilling to raise a hand to strike the priest of the Lord. So this is how you know Saul has gone insane, right? So he's like making up these stories that the priest of the Lord is conspiring with David to, to overtake him, right? And now he's saying, kill them all. And then his uh, servants is like, bro, I'm not about to kill a priest of the Lord. So then the person that snitched in the first place gets ordered to kill them and he kills all of them. And the word of God says he kills like over 70 of them. So that's why I called it a slaughter because he literally kills everybody. And then the, then he kill, he orders him to go and kill, it was 85 men. That day he killed 85 men. That's crazy. He even goes into the town of the priest and kill all the men and women and children and infants and cattle, donkeys and sheep. That's how mad he was. Not only did he kill his whole family, but then he went back to the town and killed everybody, including the animals. So now we're going to jump to 23. Oh, well, first let's break that down. So who are the main contributors to the story? So definitely saw Emilek, David, and I'm going to say Doeg because Doeg was the one that snitched on David and the priest and it's the one that goes and kills everybody. Um, What is God trying to teach us? Well, in the mix of all of this happening, David has to remain patient, patient with the Lord, patient with the process, um, and he has to seek wisdom from God right? Because he does not know what to do. No, no, everybody is going to be somewhat loyal to the king for the most part, right? And so he has to go on the run and trust that God is going to protect him. Where is this happening? You know, Moab is a couple of different cities that's in there as you go back and study on your own. 
um, just take note of all the different locations that everybody is in. Um, why is God allowing this to happen? He is, and as the story continues, you're going to see that the reason why this is happening is because he's going to rise up David as king. So through the hardships, he's going to make a stronger, better king. Okay? And how is this applicable to your life? Well, there are times when strongholds are in your life, right? But you must not, you must not allow those strongholds to keep you down. You have to keep moving. So I always give the example of, um, you know, church hurt or, or if you were molested as a kid, you can't allow your trauma to keep you where you are. You need to seek the wisdom of God and allow and be patient with yourself and with God so that you can start to get the healing that you need. All right. So let's go to 1 Samuel 23. So now this one, as I said, is Saul's search. So this is after all of that craziness. He's still after David and David is still on the run. Okay. And so when David was told, look, the Philistines are fighting against Kale and are looting and threshing floors, thrashing floors. He inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go and attack these Philistines? The Lord answered him, go attack the Philistines and save Kale. But David's men said to him, here in Judah, we are afraid. How much more than if we go to kill against the Philistines forces? Once again, David inquired of the Lord and asked um, of the Lord and the Lord answered him, go down to Kilo, uh, Kilo, uh, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men went and they fought the Philistines. So here you can see. David is constantly seeking the Lord for wisdom. In the midst of everything, even when other people are scared, he is still inquiring of the Lord. How is this different from Saul? When Saul's men were told to go on a mission and complete it, they did not listen, right? And Saul later it reveals that it was because he was scared that they would turn and attack him. Okay, those that's just an excuse. Because if that was the case, you know that the Lord is there for you and you can go and acquire him. Ask him, what do I need to do? And so that's where you can see already how David is a different king than Saul. He's going to ask God for guidance. So they go and they kill everybody and they're chilling. And then he uh, Saul finds out where he is. So him and his man have to get on the move and they got to start moving, right? And so, basically, let's go to verse 20. So, they have to leave. So, now, your majesty, come down wherever it pleases you to do so, and we will be responsible for giving him into your hands. So, now, they're letting him know, like, hey, we know where David is. So, Saul replies, the Lord bless you for your concern for me. Go and get more information. He's like, I hear what you're saying, but I need you to go get more information. And this is Saul. Find out where David usually goes and who he's seen with. They will tell me, um, they tell me he's very crafty. Find out about all the hiding places he uses and come back to me with definite information. Then I will go to go with you. If he is in the area, I will track him down among all the clans of Judah. So David finds out the Philistines are, t are, are wreaking havoc. Him and his men inquire of God. God tells them to go and handle their business. They get there. They're chilling. And then Saul gets information. I'm not, I'm not in Zoom, Mom. I'm just on Facebook. Um, so he goes and acquires... The, uh, he goes and says, hey, okay, if he's there, figure out everything, get all the information you can so that then I am able to, um, I am able to, to, um, yeah, help out, uh, go, go and handle my business. So okay. now let's, let's take a second and bring it, put this all together. So 
David is scared for his life. He's on the run. Saul is gone crazy, has slaughtered the priest, his family, and his town. Now, da now David is still relieving people of their issues with the Philistine. He is still being a warrior in this time. But Saul, Saul, instead of thinking about how the Philistines are going around, you know, doing stuff, he is focusing on searching for David. And you're going to see why that's an issue later once we continue reading. Um, Mom, we're on um, 23. Do you want to read? Sure. Um, let me get to the chapter 23 verse 24 that's where i stopped 24 mm -hmm. you said 23 verse 24 yes okay so they arose and went to zeph before saul but david and his men were in the wilderness of moan in the plain on the south of jeshimon when Saul and his men went to seek him, they told David. Therefore, he went down to the rock and stayed in the wilderness of Moan. And when Saul heard that, he pursued David in the wilderness of Moan. Then Saul went on one side of the mountain, and David and his men went on the other side of the mountain. So David made haste to get away from Saul. For Saul and his men were encircling David and his men to take them. But a messenger came to Saul saying, hurry and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Therefore Saul returned from pursuing David and went against the Philistines. So they called that place the Rock of Escape. Then David went up from there and dwelt in strongholds at in Jedi. So, as you remember when I just said earlier that there's an issue with the fact that, one, Saul is so fixated on trying to capture David that he's not even recognizing how the Philistines are just going crazy in the area. And that eventually, they're going to make their way to where he is, where his mm -hmm. people are. So, God is always going to be with you when you're dealing with something and he will provide provision. Okay. So who are the main contributors here? Saul David, of course. Um, Jonathan makes an appearance here. Um, so he's always a main contributor here, but um, what is God trying to teach us? Even in fear, you need to seek God's wisdom. Even in fear, be up like God, knows you he created you so you can come before him with anything on your mind yesterday I, I i went before god and i was like look i'm upset i'm upset with with my my decision making that i made in the past and i'm seeing those seeds that i sowed then and i'm like the, the harvest that you had me prophesied about yes i'm reaping a harvest but it's not the harvest i was thinking i'm thinking a good harvest no, it's a bad harvest from bad seeds that I sowed years ago, and I'm seeing the manifest right before my eyes, and I'm uh, upset. And I'm upset with you for not telling me that the, that's the, that was what's going to happen, to prepare mm -hmm. me mentally for what's going to happen. And then he tells me, he's like, look, I don't got to prepare you mentally for everything. You're already prepared. You can handle it. I need you to see what you did so you won't keep making these same mistakes because I'm about to move you. I'm about to propel you. And because I'm about to propel you, I need you to know what decisions you don't need to make ever again. When you have the same, because this is a funny thing. People be like, I keep doing, I keep ending up in the same place, but I had different, different circumstances. It's because when you're put, when you're in, in a position to make a decision, you make the same decisions. And that is insanity. If you're expecting to make the same decisions, but you're getting um, expecting a different result, that is insanity. Okay? So God does not want insane Christians. He does yeah. not. He wants you to learn from your mistakes, learn from your tests, right? And then move forward. Um, and so that's what he wants you to do. Even in your fears, seek him. Okay? 
Um, and I'm going to come and ask you your thoughts, Mom. I'm just going to um, continue down these uh, questions. Sure. Uh, where is this happening? When is this happening? Of course, while he's on the run, he's mm -hmm. on the run from Saul. Where is it ha happening? It's in quite a different, different places. So when you go back and read him, underline those places so that you mm -hmm. can start to, um, like I said, study the word a little more. Why is God allowing this to happen? To show David that he will never let anything happen to him as long as he is seeking God's wisdom. The yes. purpose of this story is to show you, seek his wisdom. Yes. When you seek his wisdom, nothing will happen to you harmfully, right? Of course, things are going to happen. Like, this is not a, a cool situation to be on the run for your life. However, when you're seeking him, he's not going to let Saul, Saul did not kill David. Saul didn't even exactly. get a chance to kill David. He never gets the chance. You know why? Because God prevents it. Right? Even down to the point where he had him prophesying and taking off his clothes. That's how much he will drop the spirit of God before he'll let something happen to you. Um, and then how is this applicable to your life? Your past will continue to haunt you if you don't try to move forward. Your past, your trauma will keep you in this place. In this place, we we talk about um, with get out the sunken place. You will stay in that sunken place if you do not move forward with the wisdom that God gives you. And I got a prophetic word for you later, um, people. You got, oh. Mommy? Mommy. You have yeah, you I think you're just connected. Um, I just wanted to just kind of tag off of what you said um you have to trust god in any situation like she was saying sometimes we'll sow a bad seed and that bad seed the re reaping of that bad seed may be years later while you're doing good things and you're trying to understand why nothing is happening right three for you. years later yeah this can happen and then it, sometimes if you ask god he'll show you what's what's going on but he'll also let you know that he's a loving god and he's gonna back you he's gonna be like i mean he he he's a god of just he's a just god so his word cannot lie if he says that if you sow bad seed you're gonna reap bad bad he he's not gonna let that not happen because that's his word he's not gonna go back on his word so some of the things we go through is because it's a test but most of the times when we go through something, it's something that we created ourselves. Yep. And then we want to go back and blame God for it when we were the ones who were guilty. And we have to take our punishment, how they say, like a man, and, and, and get back in alignment with God. The yep. more you seek him and do what he wants you to do, his will, and, and you trust him and have courage, he is going to protect you. I've seen it so many times where people would do things to me and I want to retaliate and God says, no, be quiet. And I would feel like, oh man, like they got away with that. Like, that's not right. But I, I obey God. And I say, okay, Lord, I'm gonna let it go. Later down the line, something happens. All I'm saying is that God will fight your battles. You don't have to fight him and you trust him. And, and I want to tell you. And I want to add, um, you you reap what you sow. Yes. Not where you sow, what you sow, okay? So let's say you're sowing money and you're hoping for money, right? But you're sowing your money in bad ground. Bad, you're sowing bad seed in bad ground or sowing bad seed in good ground, right? Either way, you're not going to reap what you're trying to sow. You have to sow what you want to reap, okay? I, like I said, I sowed bad seed three years ago. Did not recognize that. And when I say sow, I'm talking about the decisions that I made, right? Our decisions is what puts us in our purpose, okay? I, I went to undergrad took out student loans four years later my student loans have matriculated more money i sold you know loans now i'm reaping a big bill okay 
Yeah. So you sow, you sow, what you sow is what you get. I sow debt, I receive debt, right? When I sow knowledge to people, I receive more knowledge. More knowledge. Well, people are like, oh, you're so wise for your age. Don't, that is not because I'm justice, right? It's because I'm sowing knowledge to others. And because I'm sowing knowledge to others, God is now allowing me to reap more knowledge. And it's not just biblical knowledge. It's, it can be business knowledge. It can be yeah. um, things with science. I, I work with the government. So I'm, lear I'm, I'm learning a lot when it comes down to the government and things about policies, health policy. And so I'm so, and so because I'm sowing, I, I'm going to be on a, um, a, a panel for my school, right? I'm on a panel. I'm going to be talking about leadership and public health and things like that. I set up a platform and now God is sowing opportunities for me to continue to speak, to, to be, to teach. I always knew that I was supposed to be a teacher. Like I, if you really, I, when I think about it, I used to act like a teacher when I was like a kid, like you played a little that, but then also all through undergrad and all through undergrad, I did like tutoring and like teaching like the little kids on the summer. Then my very first job out of college was teaching science. And then my job now, I'm still somewhat teaching. When I was doing dialysis, I still somewhat. So I'm starting to see how God has always placed me in places where I had to teach. So I am a teacher, right? I just don't like little kids like that. Like I love little kids. <laughs> I just don't like it enough to be a like a school teacher, right? Maybe, maybe I would do like undergrad, but I don't, I don't know a about professor. Like more like a professor, yeah. Yeah, like a professor. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So you'll sow what you want to reap, not where. So sometimes you know, church would be like, "Oh, sow a seed, sow monetary seed," right? And that's good. Cause that's how you built the kingdom of God, right? But sometimes you just need to sow your time. Like, listen to God will show, tell you where you tell need you what to you sow. need. Yes, that's doing His will, as Justice say, what God tells you to do, not what you want to do. Exactly, <laughs> or what the pastor won't let yeah. God d -d 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 tell you what to do. And when you have a pastor that say, "Hold up, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a step back. Let God do what you want, what He want, what He want with you." I, I, I'm just going, I'm going to sow a little seed, what I think, but let, let God, let God. And I'm like, I love it when I hear a pastor say that, because that's how I know they're literally seeking the word of God, word of God and, what, and what God wants, not what they want, what they want. Exactly. So now we're going to move to 24, trucking along. We're almost done. Um, so this is humble yourself. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. Um, so we're going to go ahead and read starting with verse one. Now it happened when Saul had returned from following the Philistines that it was told to him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness of El Jedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men from, the, from all of Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. Okay, you can stop there. So, okay, <laughs> let's bring this back. David's on the run for his life, okay? Saul is insane, slaughters some priests, okay? After slaughtering pe some priests, he finds out where David is because David goes and does what David does, save people from the Philistines, right? He goes and tries to search for him. In the midst of searching for him and getting close, the Philistine is now attacking his people, so he has to leave. As soon as he handles that, he goes right back. So he's not, it's like not clicking for this man. Leave him alone. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, we're going to jump down to verse. No, no, let's just keep reading. Go ahead, okay. verse three. Okay, so he came to the sheepfold by the road where there was a cave, and Saul went to the, attend to his needs. David and his men were staying in the of the cave. Then the men of David said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand that you may do to him as it seems good to do to you. And David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. 
Okay, you can stop there. So you're going to see here, you're going to have people in the background trying to hype you up like, yeah, look, look, see what's happening? It's your time. This is your time. Do what you got to do, blah, 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 right? And you're going to see why it's more um, advantageous. I had a coworker who uses that word all the time in her emails. I'm like, why? But it's more advantageous, right, <laughs> to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. we're going to jump down to verse 8 David also arose afterward and went out uh, of the cave and called out to Saul saying my lord the king and when Saul looked behind him David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed down mm -hmm. and David said to Saul why do you listen to the words of men who say indeed David seeks your harm look this day your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you today into my hands in the cave. And someone urged me to kill you. But my eyes spared you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yes, see the corner of your robe is my hand, is in my hand. I'm sorry, in my hand. For it that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you. Know and see that, that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand, mm. and I have not sinned against you. Mm. Yet, um, we lost her. We lost her. Um, so he said, my Lord, the, uh, may the Lord judge us between you. Let me see if she's back. Okay. So it says, I have not wronged you, but yet you're hunting me down to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me and may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me but my hand will not touch you. So he lets him know, like, I'm not going to do anything to you. Let the Lord handle you. God, that's in God's word. I. Yeah, and I can't add you now. It won't let me. It won't let me add you back. I'm sorry. Okay, so it says, um, he looks like, the Lord says, vengeance is mine, right? Vengeance is mine. All right, so now, <clears throat> so he's like, I'm not going to touch you. As the old saying goes, from evil doers will evil deeds, so my hand will not touch you. So for evil, do for evil doers come evil deeds. That's the word, right? That's what he said. That is the word. Evil doers. Sorry will about have that, guys. Time. Yeah, I keep getting kicked off. I apologize. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, so now you can go to verse six to sixteen, fourteen. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. After whom has the king of Israel came out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? Mm. Mm. Therefore, let the Lord be judged and judge between you and me and see and plead my case and deliver me out of your hand. So it was when David had finished speaking these words to Saul that Saul said, is this your voice, my son, David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Then he said to David, you are more righteous than I, for you have rewarded me with good, whereas I rewarded you with evil. And you have shown this day how you have dealt with well with me. For when the Lord delivered me into your hands, you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him get away safely? Therefore, may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now I know indeed that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. 
Therefore, swear now to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me and that you will not destroy my name from your father's house. So David gave him his oath to Saul and then Saul returned home. But David and his men went back up to the strongholds. So if you see here, when I read this, the Lord revealed to me that that was the moment where he allowed that, that distressing spirit that's been upon Saul to lift, to be lifted up. And that's mm -hmm. why he says, is that, is that you, my son, David? It was like he had clearer eyes. Yeah. So sometimes you could be under the influence of the enemy, thoughts that's going through your mind that's not even occurring, right? And then he'll have his little minions right there behind. Like, yeah, they're doing that. Yeah, he's doing that. And so now he has in his mind that he needs to hunt down somebody who has been nothing but loyal to him. Um, do you have anything you want to add before we go through all the questions? Um, no, I was just saying sometimes um, when, because if you remember with Saul, he kept dab dibbling and dabbling in um, like jealousy and things like that where his mind, he his mind was like covered, like just he was in a cloud. So sometimes those are things that happen where the devil can get in because we're so um, deep into our whatever it is, like our jealousy or our deceit or our hate, that it'll cause you to have these thoughts that will further put you into a sinful position. And this is what had happened with Saul. You know, Saul Why had gotten so this? far away, yeah, from God that he was having the anxiety and the that that evil spirit uh, attacking him, and probably voices telling him to kill David because David is really against him. But once he came into a, a reality of seeing what was really going on, he realized what he was doing was evil. And so I just wanted to add on to that. And honestly, Saul's a prophet. Like, he's a prophet. He's prophesied it in this story. Just in this story, he's prophesied it multiple times. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go through the questions, and then we're going to finish out. Um, and like I did say, I do have a prophetic word for you guys, so I really hope you listen. Um, it's, again, another warning. I don't know why he keep doing this to me. I, I want to say the good stuff, but... <laughs> um. So who are the main contributors? Of course, David and Saul. What is God mm -hmm. trying to teach us? Humble yourself and you'll you'll be set free. Yeah. And you can also set free others through being by, by you being humbled. Uh where is this happening? In 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 Jetty? In Jetty? In Getty? In Getty, um, yeah. Yeah, that in Getty. Um when is this happening while David's on the run? Mm -hmm. Why is God allowing this to show everyone how humble, how being having humility and loving others um, can shift a whole situation, mm -hmm. right? He shifts this whole situation by showing love and by having humility. Um, and but it's also to show us that David has a pure heart, mm -hmm. right? Even once we start to uh, get into David's story more and we start to see his strongholds things he hadn't dealt with and I want you to realize this there's two reasons why the enemy comes into your life okay mm -hmm. you're about to enter into something and he wants to prevent it hallelujah there's an angel in here <laughs> sorry um you're about to enter into something and he wants to prevent it or you're there and he wants to bring you back once you hit it big this is how you know you hit it big you you hit it big everything's going good and now you're starting to see things like happening around you, um, getting sick, family members getting sick. Um, one example, and you're probably not going to like this example, but a lot of those uh, mega churches, uh, pastors who end up having find out he has a side chick, right? He didn't deal with his, um, his lust. His hidden sin. His hidden, hidden sin. sin. Yeah. And so because he didn't deal with his lust, Jezebel was able to come in. Delilah was able to come in. All types of spirits was able to enter into that space. And because he was not where he should have been constantly looking it in the mirror so that he can seek God for wisdom so that he's able to watch himself. I yeah. am constantly praying that God, like God, search my heart, search my mind. 
help me because I like I struggle sometimes to wake up right and so I have to ask God search my mind search my heart you need to detox it do I need to go on a fast what needs to happen so that I am moving forward where where you need me to move forward I want to walk with God like Enoch walked yes right I want to walk with God like that and for me Mm. to be able to do that I have to be constantly looking in the mirror Yes, yes I am lacking in a lot of areas which is why i'm constantly praying about it god yeah. i need you right yeah. help me yeah and it's nothing wrong with being vulnerable he prefers you to be humble he shows himself to me more when i'm in my worst you know state my most hurt broken state god shows himself to me so he wants he wants to know that you need him you know, and, and when you're in a situation where you need him and you are, you know, you just opening yourself to him. He, 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 wow. I can't, I, whew, sorry. <laughs> he, uh, whew, thank you, Lord. He just wants us to love on him and to honor him. And when you do that in the most humble way, he shows himself to you. That's why it's like when you praise and worship, just because thing good things just start happening and stuff that you didn't even think about or was hoping would happen, it just happens. Like God, it's like I can't explain. It's almost like when you give Him the reverence that He deserves. You know, we never can give Him enough, but just when you just humble and broken before Him, that's when He moves. Um, and then how is this applicable to your life? Um, there are going to be times when leaders in your life are harsh to you. Um, but you have to still remain humble to those leaders. God has appointed them to be a leader over your life. If they, if he didn't, you wouldn't be in that situation. Right. Um, and so make sure you're remembering that, that lesson on submission that I gave. And definitely I would suggest going back and listening to it. Because you can only be propelled to the level of submission, like the level of authority you're willing to submit to. Mm. If you can't submit to a certain level, you'll never have that authority. That's just how it, that's just how it works. So make sure you're remaining humble. God will fight your battles for you. Mm. Spirit is, it's on me now. All right. So now we're going to get to one of my least favorite stories about david is him meeting abigail like really don't like this story but we're gonna read it um so samuel dies the prophet and um you know david has to he's like still moving around so even though him and um saw a cool he doesn't go back right he just continues you know, doing what he's doing. He's still um, going around. And so we're going to meet this new person, Nabal, Mm -hmm. who is just a dick, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to just say it how it is. He's a dick. Um, So let's, and he's wealthy too. But um, David is like helping out. And basically, you know, as he's helping out, uh, dude, you know, get sassy with one of David's, um, you know, people. It was like, who are y'all to come and ask me for supplies? I'm not giving you anything. Like, get away from me. Um, and so David gets angry. He was like, hold up. Wait, <laughs> did you just act like you don't know who I am and you don't understand what I'm asking from you? Um, and so let's jump down because this is a long story so I just gave you like a quick summary of the beginning and so then a servant comes up to Abigail and Abigail is literally the wife of Nabal so Nabal is the rich mean person who is like I ain't giving you anything I don't care what y'all been doing for me it doesn't matter so we're gonna jump down to verse 14 can you start reading there um what chapter is 25 14 Mm mm-hmm okay now one of the young men told Ab- Abigail Nabal's wife saying look David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master and he reviled them 
but the men were very good to us and we were not hurt nor did we miss anything as long as we accompanied them when we were in the field they were a they sorry they were a wall to us both by night and day all the time we were with them keeping the sheep now therefore know and consider uh, what you will do for harm is determined against our master and against all his household for he is such a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him so we're going to stop there okay. so you're going to see why it's important to have a wife because your wife is your covering right yes. um, Eve came from Adam's ribs ribs are literally support they, they uh, support your upper but body. They support the body right but they also protect. They protect the lungs. In the so heart. So you're in, in the heart, yeah. But so the you gotta remember your wife is not only your a good thing that you found, but they're your support, they're your protection, they're your covering, they're mm -hmm. your favor, right? Mm -hmm. And Abigail is going to show you how you can reflect all of that. Um, I'm gonna read a little bit and then I'm gonna stop. So Abigail acted quickly. Like she knew what was about to happen. Like, oh my gosh, not like kind of like a not again. Here this man goes again, right? She acted quickly and she took two hundred loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five dressed sheep, five sha shaves of roasted grain, uh a hundred cakes of raisin and two hundred cakes of pressed figs and loaded them on a donkey. So this had to be a big donkey because this is a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> and then she took, and then she told her servants, go ahead, I'll follow you. But she did not tell her husband at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is the key part. So I have a problem with that personally. Like she made moves without talking to her husband. However, she knows who, who her husband is and she knows what was going to befall upon her her if household she move. had she not moved quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so there are going to be times where, you know, you're going to feel a move and that you're supposed to move, you know, bef before your husband. But I would just pray before making that move to make sure that that's something God really wants. Mm -hmm. Because if it is something he really wants, trust me, I've watched God melt my husband's heart right before. Oh, me. yeah. I was like, he's going to be bad. Oh my gosh, I did that. But I had to do it. Ah. And then it's like, I told him, he's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I see where that logic came from. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> so I just wanted to make that note. So she goes before um, him, she humbles him, herself. And then basically, um, uh, he accepts it and he says, okay, go in peace. We're not going to mess with you. We're not going to go and kill your whole household. So later she comes back, her husband's drunk and she's like, all right, well, just by the way, the next day she's like, by the way, I gave them all that stuff. He got all angry, but then he ends up dying. And basically David ends up taking her as his wife. So he was like, well, I see a good thing when I see it. So oh, he did, yeah. you a widower. Come, One man's come. trash is another man's treasure. Exactly. So I hope this was a, a blessing to you. I'm going to answer those little questions. And then I'm going to give you a prophetic word that um, God gave me. He gave me two words of knowledge. Um, so who are the main contributors? Nibal, Abigail, and David, of course. What um, is God trying to teach us? Wives are covering for men, um, kind of what I was talking about. And that God will avenge you because Nabal ends up dying. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, when does this happen after Samuel's death? Um, he dies. So sad. I like the prophet Samuel. Um where you know you can read about where it is and then why is god allowing this to happen to show others that the lord is with david to show us that we should be kind to strangers because mm -hmm. you never know who you're dealing with or who they are to god right mm -hmm. but he's also showing us again how he's building david up he's building him up he's getting him prepared for kingship he yeah. was already anointed at a young age and david knows this however he's building him up you know, he's about to call. become yeah. a success. Yeah, he's about to, you know, walk into a, thr a throne that he doesn't have a birthright to, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then, well, technically he do. 
by God's standards, standards. he has yeah. a birthright. <laughs> just not by physical standards, yeah. Um, and then how is this applicable to your life? Um, just remember, always be kind to others. You never know who you're um, dealing with. And, yes. um, you and that's God. the power that other people possess. Yeah, and that's God's um, will for us to love each other. He says that we should do this. All right. Um, my phone is about to die, so I want to make sure I get this prophetic word out. Plus, it's been an hour. Um, so I um, was in a mix of, with another prophet. And so anytime you're in a mix with another prophet, you will feel that prophetic gift hit you. That's how you can tell when there's other prophets in the mix. Um, and so then I was like, hmm, you put me in this presence for a reason, God. What prophetic word do you have for your people? God then instructed me to Mark 12, 9, and I'm going to read it to you. And like I said, this is a warning. So Matthew, Mark, Mark, Matthew, Mark. It reads, and I'm reading the NIV. It reads, what then will the owner of the vineyards do? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyards to others. That's what God's word says. So God has given you power and authority but if you continue to misappropriate the gifts and blessings that God has provided you, he will kill it and he will give it to others. Yes. I'm going to I've repeat. Seen him do it. I'm going to repeat God's word. Okay. Cause we're in the midst of a harvest. So I'm going to be very clear. I'm talking to you. Okay. And you know who I'm talking to. God has given you power and authority but if you continue to misappropriate the gifts and blessings God has provided you, he will kill it. So he's going to kill it for you take and give it you. to somebody else. Yes. He's not going to take it away. He's going to kill it. There's a difference between taking something away and killing it. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell the story. This is a story that popped in my head. I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to say it. I know someone who got in an argument with their dad and their dad took their PlayStation and broke it. Okay. There's a difference between him taking it and putting it in a closet until you're off punishment and then breaking it. God is going to break it and you're not going to get it back and he's going to give it to somebody else. We are in a season of a harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And many have walked into the overflow, but God is knocking on the door, providing instructions, and you are not listening. This is your warning. Do not misappropriate blessings and overflow or gifts. Be sure to sow back into what God is telling you to sow into because he will kill it and give it to another. He mm -hmm. doesn't need you to sow it. He wants you to. Mm -hmm. But don't get it twisted. He'll take it. If you're not going to give it willingly, he will take it. Sow where God tells you to sow. He's That's right. clear. He's knocking at the door. Listen. Don't be like Saul. That's what uh, he also told me to throw in there. Okay? Don't be like Saul. You saw what happened to Saul. He had it. He had everything. All he had to do was listen. He didn't listen. And now he is tormented. And his, he, his uh, children lost their inheritance. All because he didn't listen. Mm. Listen. Don't be like Saul. All right, word number two. This one's a little lighter. Sorry, I'm always like up here like, yeah. All right, God also told me to tell you that in the last quarter, so we're in the last quarter of mm -hmm. the year, he is going to make things clear. That goes for the Joshua's in the world and for the Moseses in the world. Joshua learned under Moses. During this time under Moses, he was getting trained up. Some of you are still looking for purpose or are still working um, to get to your purpose. You know who, what your purpose is, but you're working to get to that purpose. Uh, well, by December 31st, God will make it clear what you need to do and will make it clear where your resources are coming from. Um, God wanted me to put a timeline so that he can show you he can show you better. He can tell you. I'm telling you, but he's going to show you. Okay? Um, as for the Moseses in the world, 
God is going to start revealing who you should pour into. It, this is important because the window of opportunity is closing for some, and God needs everyone to play their part in the kingdom. So if you miss uh, God's parable right there, Moses was the mentor. Joshua was the mentee. Some of you are mentees looking for mentors. God's going to make it clear who that should be. He's also going to provide all the resources for you to get where you need to go for your purpose. As far as the Moses, Moses was Joshua mentor. So there mm -hmm. are mentors out there. There are people who are already blessed beyond measures in their purpose. And God is going to start to provide you people that you need to pour into. So be aware, be cognizant of what's happening around you. So I know I give a prophetic word for the month. So this is a prophetic word for the last 90 days of the year, even though we've already entered into the 90 days, but I'm just saying this quarter, the prophetic quarter word will be, I'm going to, uh, God is going to make things clear, um, clear vision and clear instruction. And so I want to pray for that clear vision, clear instruction um, because some of you might be a little confused as to what was I talking about earlier when I said God is going to kill it if you don't listen. So I want to make sure God is going to be clear to you. I just gave you a warning. So now it's time for you to, okay, take the warning, pray about it, test the word, test the spirit by the spirit, yeah. right? So we're going to go ahead and pray for clear vision and instruction. So dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be before you this evening. Yes, We're so Jesus. grateful to have you in our lives. We're so grateful that you're pull pulling in and drawing people in, Father God. We have seen a mass movement um, in the Christianity um, realm, Father God. We're seeing the mass movement in the kingdoms, t-shirts, TV shows, hallelujah. We're even seeing Pure Flix, which is like a, a similar to Netflix, but it's a Christian-based uh, streaming site. Father God, you are raising up your people. You're raising up the gifts. You're raising up the harvest. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You're raising up the revival. Hallelujah. And so because you are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah uh, Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, you're the Alpha, you're the Omega, mm -hmm. you're the Doctor, you're the Healer, you're the Banker, yes, you're everything to us, Father God. Yes, we are coming Lord. before you to seek wisdom. Hallelujah. And yeah. so before we go into our request for the evening, Father God, we want to take this time to say we're sorry. We're sorry mm -hmm. for what we have done today. We're sorry and we want to repent for whatever yes. we've done today that was not yes. of you um, yes. or for the building of your kingdom. Yes. And so, Father God, I want to pray now for clear instructions and clear revelations and clear visions. Father God, all three are different in the name of Jesus. We yeah. are going to speak against confusion we're going to yes, speak Lord. against fear. We're going to speak against any type of um, rebellion, any type of uh, hesitation to do what you said. Father God, you are clear with your prophetic word that you provided. Yes, you are clear in your word, in the biblical word, Father God. And you said, do not ever prophesy without showing it in the Bible. You yes, are Lord. not going to switch up on your word. Your word is true. Yes, it is Lord. order. And we are listening, Father God. So, so yes, reveal Lord. to us what you need to in this last quarter. We are yes, so Lord. grateful for the timeline that you have given us. In the yes, name Lord. of Jesus, we pray amen. these things. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to say amen. the prophetic word one more time because the spirit is on me heavy. Apparently, people aren't getting it. So Mark 12, 9. It's clear. Read it. Okay, I already read it. But God says he has given you the power and authority, but you have continued to misappropriate the gifts and blessings God has provided you. He will kill it and give it to someone else. Okay? And then he says, we are in a season of harvest, mm -hmm. and many are walking into the overflow, but aren't listening. Okay? This is your warning. Do not misappropriate what God has given to you. Sow back into what God is telling you to sow into, and and if you don't, he'll kill it and give it to somebody else. And then the last one is mentors. You need to seek God's wisdom to who you need to pour into and mentees. God will show you what your purpose is, and he will give you clear vision, but he was also going to show those who know who their, where their purpose is, so I fall into that bucket. He's going to show me where my resources are coming from.
Amen. Um, this is a timeline thing you have until December 31st. Uh, peace and blessings. I love you. We love you. Bye. Bye.